In this video, I'm going to build a sliding barn door at the top of the stairs. I started this project by drawing it up in SketchUp. Now this is the first project I've ever done in SketchUp before, so I'm still kind of learning the program. But the main things I wanted to do was draw the door and draw the support system on the hallway wall. Now the big thing here is I am bridging a gap between the end of the wall here in the hallway and the side of the stairwell wall. And so I needed this system to be able to support the weight of the door, which was probably going to be pushing around 100 pounds. So I decided on using a support beam that was going to be a 1x6 that's 9 feet long. Now this would end up hitting 5 studs in the hallway portion of the wall. Now to bear the weight here in the stairwell portion, I would need to put some supports going into the stairwell to hit those studs. And so what I end up doing is these are roughly two feet long and I'm gonna make the support beam three beams or three boards thick I should say and I'm gonna connect it all using four brackets four L-shaped brackets here in the stairwell portion. I used a stud finder to identify 13 possible stud locations then confirmed they were real by drilling into them with a small drill bit. I had three false positives so I ended up with 10 studs total. With all my studs located I was able to determine exactly how long my support pieces could be so I was ready to start cutting. Since most of the wood is for the horizontal slats on the door I decided to start with those pieces first. To make those cuts easier and faster, I decided to measure out a board stop and clamp it down so that all I had to do was take each of my 8 foot pieces, put it up tight against the board stop, and then cut it, and each piece would come out to 45 inches, which is what I need for each of the horizontal slats. Since I have to do 17 cuts like this, this was extremely helpful. Next I cut these support pieces for the door. Since the main support will end up 3 layers thick over the stairwell opening, I decided to start assembling part of that. First, I glued the two pieces together and then clamped them down while I waited for the glue to dry. Once it had, I came back, unclamped it, cleaned up any of the glue that had squeezed out from the edges, and then used brad nails to nail through both sides of the boards to make sure that this board was not going to come apart. I should also mention that since the second smaller board has to fit between the stairwell opening, I took it upstairs first to make sure it would fit in place before assembling it to the larger board, because after I assembled it, I couldn't cut those boards anymore. With all the boards cut and sanded, I was ready to start painting and staining. All the support pieces are going to be painted the same white that all the trim in the house will eventually get painted. For the door, I'm going to stain all the door pieces. So to start with, I had to condition everything with wood conditioner and then wait for it to dry. And then I applied a gel stain in a teak color to all the pieces. With all my support pieces painted and dried, I was ready to start mounting them to the wall. I made sure to transfer the stud locations onto the boards first, and then pre-drilled all my holes. I used a countersink drill bit so that when I drilled the screws in, I could make sure that they were below the surface of the wood, so I could come back with wood putty, fill in the hole, and then repaint the board when it was on so that none of the screws would be visible. Once the main support was mounted, I then did the two boards that went into the stairwell. The one on the left hand side ended up hitting two studs, and then the one on the right had three studs. Next I attached the final layer to the main support. This one fits directly between the two side supports, and is screwed in to the back of it with six screws. My next step was to connect the side supports in the stairwell to the main support in the hallway. To do this, I used brackets that actually came with the door hardware, originally intended to mount the door to the ceiling rather than to the wall, but I've repurposed them. They're gonna end up with four brackets total, two on each side. And it's actually kind of funny because I didn't have the screw size needed to do this originally with the hardware that came with the door. So I ended up going down to my spare bucket of screws and bolts and found exactly the four screws that I needed to do this job. My next step was to mount the rail system for the sliding door. Before I did this though, I did go back and wood putty over all of those screws that went into the studs and then repainted the surface of the boards. But I made sure not to paint over my markings for my screw locations for the rail system because I marked those while the board was still on the floor because it was a lot easier to do it then. Now the rail system is held on by seven screws and these screws are pretty long which is one of the reasons why the support in the stairwell portion need to be three layers deep. 
The first step is to make sure that the spacer is between your piece of wood and your rail and then screw through both of them into the wood. Now this spacer is used to make sure that the wheels are able to roll freely and not encounter the wall or the wood beam in my case so that the door is able to move without hitting anything. Since all of my mounting hardware for the door is black, I decided to go ahead and paint all of my screws I'm going to be using to assemble the door black as well. To assemble the door, I laid the vertical supports out on the saw horses and then started to attach the horizontal slats to them. Now the horizontal slats are not being attached in some random order. I laid them all out first and then made sure that they all fit well with the next piece in line. I wanted to make sure I could minimize as many gaps as possible. So any piece that was slightly bowed or bent would make sure that it wasn't going with a piece that was bent or bowed say in the opposite manner. This took a little bit of time but it was well worth the effort. I attached each board one at a time, making sure that they were tight to the board next to them and flush with the edge of the vertical supports when I clamped them down. Then each board gets two screws into their respective ends. What you don't see happening is that while I'm attaching each of the boards, my wife is marking the next board for me so that when I get the board, all I have to do is put it on and screw into it. I don't have to figure out where the screw is going to go. But each screw went one inch from the end and one inch from its respective side so that once the whole thing was done, every screw screw is going to be in alignment. With all the slats attached, I then flipped the doors over and then attached the 1x4s on the top and bottom of the door. Now these are set flush with their respective edges and they fit right between the two vertical supports. Next I started to add screws going through the vertical supports into the horizontal slats and these were all put in on the inner edge of the door so that they wouldn't hit the screws that were coming through the horizontal slats on the outer edge of the door. I ended up quickly running out of screws during this process so I ended up having to stop for the day and buy more screws the next morning. So with a fresh pack of screws that were freshly painted just hours prior, I was finally ready to finish all the screws going into the vertical supports. Now the placement of these screws is exactly the same as the ones going through the horizontal slats, and that is they are one inch from the edge of the vertical support and one inch from the respective side of a horizontal slat that they're going into. I decided to use pocket hole screws while assembling the door because the pocket hole screw has that kind of flat style washer head which helps it stop at the surface of the wood and not drive into it. And I didn't want any of my wood to get damaged by having a screw drive too far in and cause cracking. Next I attached the handle to the door. I could have waited a little longer to do this but it was really useful to attach it now because it helped me realize which side of the door was top and bottom and which side needed to go towards the stairwell opening and which side was going to stay in the hallway itself. Now, I've never made a door before so when I initially flipped the door over after getting the horizontal slats attached I realized the door really needed some cross bracing because it was a little too wobbly. Now this was a really annoying thing to learn at this point in the process because I felt like I was about to have the door assembled that day and then realized that I was gonna have to stop and go cut sand and stain two more pieces of wood. Now I was finally ready to attach the hangers to the door. To do this, I first started by making sure I knew where the edge of my vertical support was underneath, which is what the purple tape is doing. And then I marked the center of that vertical support onto the horizontal slat. Now this ended up essentially being two inches in from both sides because each of the hangers is about an inch and a half wide. So marking that center line was really just so I knew exactly where the screw holes needed to fall. I then marked 
marked those screw holes and then pre-drilled through them and then attached my hardware. To make the placement of the hanger on the door easier, I simply aligned the bottom edge of the hanger with the bottom edge of my horizontal slat. If they had gone any farther, which would have been a little more ideal if I could drop it down about another half inch, that would have put me directly in the middle of that gap between the two boards and I didn't want that to happen because the tear out of drilling through there would have been atrocious. With the hangers attached, my final step was to add the anti-jump disc to the top of the door. Now these just screw into the top edge and what they help do is they help prevent the door from jumping off of the rail since you have that gap between the top of the door and the rail system itself. My final step before I could hang the door was to attach the bottom door guide to the baseboard. And what this does is it prevents the door from being able to swing back and forth, which could potentially lead your door to falling off of the rails. So this guide in particular has two wheels that sandwich the door between it, which also helps it to roll a little more efficiently when you're opening and closing the door. One piece I did not show myself installing is the door stop here on the rail. And what this is, is it's basically a shock absorber so that if you open the door too hard, it will hit this and it will absorb the impact without damaging anything. And it also prevents your door from falling off of your rail by literally rolling off the ends of it. All right guys, so the door is fully complete and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So one of the things I noticed when I bought the hardware is that the wheels moved on the rail really easily, but I was a little concerned that once the door was on there, it wasn't gonna be as smooth, but it is incredibly smooth to open and I have no issues with it at all. So I found this hardware just browsing online and I ended up buying it from Amazon. They had good reviews. And one of the things that drew me to it is that they had a lot of different bracket designs for the hangers. And so one of the things I picked is I wanted a double wheel design on each of the hangers, but they have some single wheel designs and just different uh, decorative hanger styles. Mine is just a straight, essentially a uh, metal bracket, but if you want something more decorative, you can pick out some of the fancier ones. They are just a little bit pricier. As you can see, the door moves so smoothly that even my 10 pound cats can open the door. So I might have to put some sort of lock mechanism on the opposite side so that the people who are up here as guests can actually keep the door shut and keep the cats out. So I actually have two more places in the house where I would like to add some barn style doors and eliminate uh, the normal doors that are there. I actually did the hardest door first because those other two ones, if I get to them, are uh, way easier than this one was going to be. But that's all right. So stick around because those videos will probably be coming sometime next year, possibly. I don't think I'm going to get to them this year. But we got loads more content coming out. So I hope you'll subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time on the DIY Grunt.